Thanks for five minutes questions. Well, thank you, and uh, thanks for all appearing before the committee, particularly Ms. Zemer. It's always good to have Montanans here in Washington, D.C. Welcome. As we all know, water is a basic need of life. Despite this reality, there are still rural and tribal communities throughout Montana that face significant barriers to access clean and reliable sources of water. And that's why I'm proud to help introduce the Western Water Supply and Planning Enhancement Act that includes my provisions to authorize two critical rural water projects in Montana, the Dry Red Water and the Muscle Shell Judith Basin projects, which would treat and deliver water to over 30,000 residents of central and eastern Montana and parts of North Dakota. This bill also includes other important provisions, including the Irrigate Act, which would help facilitate irrigation projects throughout Indian Country, and the Water Rights Protection Act, which would prevent federal agencies from requiring businesses or landowners to transfer their water rights in exchange for renewing a permit or lease to utilize public lands. It's time the federal government fulfills its obligations and promises to Montana's rural communities and provides needed funding to ensure our rural water projects are completed and our water rights are protected. Uh, a question for Ms. Weldon. Uh, Ms. Weldon, I understand you spent time in Missoula, Montana, where you served in, as the regional forester for the Forest Service Northern Region. So I'm sure you know the issues regarding forest management and water quality in Montana communities. The Forest Service has classified 134 watersheds in Montana as impaired, which is the most severe condition. We need to restore these watersheds, and it's why I strongly support the provision in Senator Flake's legislation that provides new tools to swiftly implement watershed projects developed through a collaborative process. In fact, I urge the administration to support these new tools. I'm further told by the Forest Service that there are currently five projects in Montana that are designed primarily to restore watersheds. Two of these projects have faced litigation. There are an additional four active lawsuits against projects that would enhance watersheds as a byproduct of the project's integrated management. All of these projects were developed through collaborative process. I'd like to highlight one that's literally in my backyard. It's the Bozeman Municipal Watershed Project. I went to Bozeman Kindergarten all the way through college. This project was conceived in 2005, more than a decade ago, by the Forest Service and collaborative stakeholders working together, but it's been tied up in litigation now for years and was enjoined since 2013. So, Ms. Weldon, when a project is enjoined, that means work on the ground must stop. Is that right? That's correct. What impacts can a delay in implementing a project have on the condition of an impaired watershed? Thank you for your question, Senator Durdanes. And I was actually able to walk the ground where this project is, uh, the, the Bozeman Municipal Watershed Project and understand the <coughs> conditions that are faced there, um, the need for us to do forest thinning to reduce the risk of um, losing that portions of that watershed to wildfire and subsequent effects downstream for water quality and quantity. So um, when, when a project gets enjoined and, and it must be stopped, uh, what, what happens is that the good collaborative agreement around the need and value for this, this restoration work to be done to protect water is delayed. Um, each summer, or each season, we face the risk of increasing insect and disease infestation and the continuing decline of condition, and of course, the threat of wildfire. And uh, one wildfire um, in an area where we've made the investment and have the good public support uh, for doing this work can nullify that and increase the um, impacts to citizens to get clean water and the work that needs to be done to put those landscapes back together to have clean water again in the future. So the delays are a significant problem when we know that the work we would invest in will make a difference. And we, uh, we've had some fires recently that uh, had it not been for maybe a wind change and so forth, we could have come through that watershed that affects, it's, uh, in fact, we're the fastest growing county in Montana, Montana State University, 14,000 students in addition to 35,000 residents of Bozeman. But as I've noted, uh, these watershed impacted lawsuits are, are made in Montana. Uh, they're, they're working against, they're working against made in Montana collaborative projects. 
I'm a champion of collaboration, but I think you recognize it hasn't been a cure-all. The collaborative process hasn't been a cure-all to avoiding litigation in Montana, and we need to strengthen them. Yes, and so I would say that it, collaboration is, does not prevent lawsuits, but it does change the, it, it, changed the, it changes the playing field. Um, as our, our um, uh, witness from Trout Unlimited has said, the value of bringing people together around what's important and around the value of watersheds and forest is making a difference. And we're finding that um, even as we have challenges, we've been able to better resolve them working through collaboratives than without having them. Yeah, and I'm a big supporter of incentivizing collaboratives. It's uh, what we're seeing is that it's absolutely a step in the right direction. It just has been insufficient at times. It's not the absolute cure-all. We need to continue to work here on stopping some of this litigation here that's uh, the stops good made in Montana collaborative projects. Great. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you, Senator Daines. And